Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange, and we are doing a breaking news with MLN News. My friend John Crump from MLN News is joining us. John, uh, this is going to be a follow-up to the ATF uh, ghost raid warrant that went down with Polymer 80. For folks who are watching this and aren't aware of what happened, uh, don't know what rock you've been living under. Uh, in the gun world here, but um, the ATF did raid Polymer 80 in Nevada, and it looks like they got their hands on um, a computer or a few computers from there, and they've actually been visiting people over the last uh, several days since, uh, what, Thursday or Friday, they've been yeah, visiting since, people since, around the country. Mm -hmm. Since Thursday, uh, it seems like it's isolated to one or two different field offices, so I don't know if it's like a nationwide thing where they're going, but uh, it's at least in two different field offices, but it, it remains to be seen whether uh, it's just a couple field offices acting on their own fruition or they're doing it because of higher orders. We do know that Polymer 80 was told that no, none of their customers were going to be visited, and we know that is a lie. Right. So so the ATF basically lied to Polymer 80 about that. Uh, what's Polymer 80 doing to answer that? Because I'm sure there's a lot of customers out there that are on the edge um, well, that they're going to be visited by ATF agents um, demanding their property, right? I mean, that That is a possibility. Uh, it's unclear what the ATF got. They didn't get everything. Most of Polymer 80 stuff was, was, was cloud based and Polymer 80 to their credit did not turn over any of that information. And California tried to get um, their customer records via subpoena mm -hmm. and Polymer 80 once again refused to comply with that subpoena by turning over customer information. So okay. that's really good sign from Polymer 80. It looks like they really are backing up their customers. Okay, that's good news. Um, is there some kind of fund out there to help out the customers who now will be facing um, legal charges? Uh, I don't think any customers are going to be facing legal charges. Okay. What they're going to do, I talked to several different attorneys, and what they're going to do is threaten you, we're going to go get a warrant, whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it looks like they're trying to force you into volunteering voluntarily turning over mm -hmm. your 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 firearm or your frame whether yeah. you need it or not mm -hmm. but it but i talked to several different really prominent uh, firearms attorneys from different organizations and different firms mm -hmm. and they all said they don't think the atf will pursue charges against anyone for having these okay and they, it's just a scare tactic right Right. I think, didn't Joshua Prince or someone put out something? Um, is his name uh, Joshua Prince? Uh, something Prince. Uh, from, from Pennsylvania? Yeah, Josh yeah. Prince. From, yeah. I don't, I don't know if he did or not. Right. Um, let's see. I'll just throw this up here, and I'm, and, and I'm completely surprising you with this. Uh, Prince Law Office. This is from Prince Law Office's blog that someone sent to me here. And it basically says, if ATF comes a knocking, only surrender your 80% frame or receiver under protest so and then it goes through you haven't out, actually had a chance it says many in the firearms community uh, are aware the uh, the atf uh, rated polymer 80 last week and since then there's at least one report of a customer being visited by atf forced to surrender their p80 given what appears to be atf's active enforcement of its imperative uh, jiggery pokery ever-changing interpretations of the gun control act and implementing regulations it is important that any individual confronted by atf regarding this newly minted interpretation advise the agent that he slash she is surrendering the items under protest that you do not consent to the forfeiture or destruction of your property and that you require a pr uh, property receipt from the atf um, and then be aware that the agent may attempt to have you sign an ATF 3400.1 form consent to forfeiture of destruction of property and waiver of notice, which you should not sign under any circumstances. Um, I, obviously, that kind of like came left field for you, but 
Have you heard similar things? That's basically what I was told by every attorney I talked to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if, if, you know, for anyone out there who's worried about this, of getting visited. Now, he mentioned one. What's the number that you're aware of? And I know this may be unofficial. Uh, unofficial, I can tell you that, uh, let's put it this way. It's happening in two different field offices. Mm -hmm. and that's what I was telling you earlier. I don't know if it's just rogue field offices or uh, like a, a more uh, nationwide thing. We're just mm -hmm. hearing, it about, hearing about it from mm -hmm. two different field offices. So mm -hmm. it's only happening in two different field offices on opposite ends of the country. Okay. And you can't well, tell us what states you're hearing this. Uh... I don't want to tip any hand here. Mm -hmm. anyway. Um, because I know a lot of them are in in uh, contact with uh, different attorneys right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the main point of what we want to talk about is this ghost raid warrant, right? Seems like you got the affidavit that the ATF uh, submitted or put forward in order to get this warrant. That is correct. Okay, where'd you? How'd you get that? It's it's out there. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm sure you can find it out there, but yeah. I, it's out there. It's if you look for it, you can find it. Okay. All right. It, it, it's by by the time this video goes up, it's gonna be, uh, it's probably gonna be out there everywhere. Oh, okay. All right. So it's good. We we're pre-recording this a little bit before the article and everything uh, goes up out yeah, there. I'll put it on Crumpy.com though. Okay. Everybody. Yeah. I'm sure there's gonna be people that want to read through it. Okay. So if you could break it down um, here, what is this warrant basically talking about? Uh, the warrant is talking about a couple different things. Um, mm -hmm. One of the first things that it does, I'll confirm, is that they were only interested in the buy bill shoot kits, the BBS kits. Okay. That's what we thought, um, and that's what we were told, and according to the affidavit uh, that was used to get the warrant, that's what they were after. The warrant does acknowledge that Polymer 80 was asking some, some 4473-type questions. Okay. It's something that they don't have to do by law. But okay. They did it. So that shows that one of the things that they were trying to say is that they're marketing to the criminals and stuff like that. But by asking 4473 type questions, it doesn't appear that they're marketing to criminals. Because how often do you market to criminals and ask someone, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Right. Or, and if they say yes, then you're not going to sell it to them, but... Yeah, so obviously we don't have Polymer 80 represented here, but how are they doing that? So if you go on the website and you're buying it, there yeah, was before, something before you check out asking you that? Correct. Okay. Do the affidavit, that mm -hmm. is correct. Okay. And the ATF, is that. The F, ATF also acknowledges that in 2018, Polymer 80 submitted a, a sample, a picture of uh, their Polymer 80 frame with a, a locking block, the drill bits, and jigs to complete it, and that got mm -hmm. approval. It seems that only in combination with uh, the parts kit that the ATF is saying, hey, now that's the firearm. Yeah. But I know there are a lot of companies out there that's breaking breaking it down and removing the jig, so, mm -hmm. but it looks like they have to remove the parts more yeah. than the... So, I mean, if you look at this, for anyone who's seen the picture of the kits themselves, um, and I don't have it, I could probably pull it up here for us to, uh, you know, for the folks out there who haven't seen it. But basically, it looks like you're buying, it, it's a case that looks like you, um, you're you buying a handgun, for example, right? It comes in a handgun kind of box. Yeah, it, come, um, it comes in a carrying case. Yeah, it comes in a carrying case. Uh uh, let me see here if I could if I could just roll this in briefly for the folks out there. So here's there's multiple examples of it here. Let's go to this one. Let's see if we could if we could uh, open that up. And so there you go. There's a case that you would get it the uh, typically the frame and the jig, and then there's most of the other components that you need in order to complete this. But it's not completed, right? I mean, no. the, this this jig and this frame are not a firearm. Right? It's not readily a re readily converted into a firearm, which the ETF claims that it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. uh, to be a firearm, it has to be readily uh, made to be converted to expel a projectile, and I don't mm -hmm. see see that 
being the case with this. Yeah. So, um, but for whatever reason, the ATF has issues with it. Obviously, the frame alone, there was already an approval. And you're saying that there's further approvals for parts to go along with that as well. But ATF here has a problem with them marketing this as a, a you know, buy, build, shoot kit saying that, you know. But it doesn't actually talk about the marketing. Mm -hmm. It talks about that it's readily avail uh, like it's readily convertible to expel a projectile mm -hmm. okay which isn't exactly true in my in my eyes mm -hmm. uh, another thing is they are using like some guy in california worth twenty two thousand dollars worth mm -hmm. too much of polymer 80 products mm -hmm. but, you know you could be a reseller which is totally legal because they're not firearms uh, who knows why you bought it mm -hmm. but they they are assuming that this guy who they didn't arrest or anything is selling them on the black market. Yeah. So they never did an investigation, never had undercover people, never follow up followed up with that guy to see if he was indeed manufacturing these kits in order to uh, sell them on to well, people well, illegally. Guy, uh, I don't know for a fact mm -hmm. what they're doing with that guy because he a different guy that could be a different investigation totally mm -hmm. but it, that's mentioned in there um it's also mentioned that there's 9400 kits sold in california mm -hmm. 51,000 kits sold mm -hmm. nation um and there was one retailer that bought like two hundred thousand dollars worth but mm -hmm. once again they, they were a firearms retailer and they have a website and they sell these kits online mm -hmm. on their website so they could just be selling them online and just buying the inventory for their online sales. Mm -hmm. I I don't understand where the ATF gets off mm -hmm. on by you know gets off by saying you know hey this, these these are bought for illegal purposes when there's no evidence of that. They mm -hmm. also point to the fact that 18 year olds can buy it, mm -hmm. which yeah they can, but that's legal. You know if mm -hmm. you don't like law there's a way to change the law you just cannot decide you don't like the law and so you're gonna use that to enforce some weird law that you are creating yourself because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just not the way we do this in the country we, we shouldn't do this that way in this country mm-hmm and yeah, also, it looks it looks like this is will be easy to fight in court, but I mean, honestly, these days, right? Now who knows? Who yeah, knows? who knows? Mm -hmm. it's just so right. screwed up right now that you know you can have a rock solid case, but they don't want to go against a law enforcement agency, so they're not going to go against the law enforcement agency. Exactly. Uh, also, trying to use the excuse that some people ship these overseas, mm -hmm. and that violates the uh, the export. Control Act, which is uh, act the which regulates what you can and cannot ship overseas. Like you cannot ship overseas, like night vision goggles, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Certain types of encryption, you cannot uh, like ship overseas devices with certain types of encryption. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not. I mean, that would be something for the State Department, not really ATF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but somehow but, they got this warrant, right? Well, ninety six percent of all warrants that are applied for are granted. Okay. So there yeah. is that. Yeah. So there's not a very uh, th there's not a good net safety net to catch, um, you know. And and then once this info goes out there, right? Once they get this info off of these computers, they forever have that. There's no way to get this info back, right? Yeah. No one's gonna order them to delete it. Yeah. Okay. They're, they make a registration, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just... So, yeah. So now this pay it, the it looks like this after David is about 119 pages. 119 pages, correct. 118. Okay. Do you want me to show it? I could just skim through it. It's gonna be. It's gonna take forever to go through right. that. You can show it. I mean, there's just a, a a lot of it's noise. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, run some of this into here. So here we go. I'm just gonna scroll up past this. So basically, what what you're giving us here is the breakdown of of uh, the whole thing, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna stop at the pictures to show you guys briefly what's going on here. Um, 
Yeah, this seems like a very detailed thing. Is there, do we know why all of this um, has come forward um, in the last few weeks of December, the last few weeks of 2020? Uh, I have ideas why, but mm -hmm. I don't know for for a fact. I do know that uh, that the ATF wants to move on not only these but also braces, and they've told the the Biden administration that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe people are jockeying for position right now um, w within the ATF. Uh, you know, once uh, Biden, I guess, I don't know, sworn in or whatever, officially uh, takes over at the White House. Um, what can folks do about this right now? I mean, what can be done for the folks out there who are worried about this? Maybe people who've been visited, um, who've lost their property already. What can we do? Is there anything being done at all? Uh, there's a couple of the things that I think that you can do uh, that i know you can do you can reach out to my organization gunners of america we would we would love to hear from you you can actually reach me directly at john.crump at gunowners.org and mm -hmm. i can point you in the right direction but right now if you own these things there's probably nothing that you really need to worry about mm -hmm. but uh you know they they could show up at your house and you have to be aware of that and you have to be aware of your rights and you have the right to remain silent and remember police can lie to you mm -hmm. law enforcement can lie to you they're under no obligation to tell you the truth they can threaten you with their search warrant but the chances are they're not going to get that search warrant mm -hmm. uh, i'm not a lawyer of course but all the lawyers i talk to don't think anyone is going to be charged with the crime for having these unless you have like some type of felony or you know a prohibited person mm -hmm. okay um are you guys still looking for volunteers i i think over the weekend you were looking for volunteers in certain states alabama still, and tennessee we, what was the state uh, it was alabama mississippi, mississippi Texas. Okay. no if you have one of these kits just reach out to me mm -hmm. i'll see if i can use you or not okay all right, but the people that you're looking for have to be willing to become part of a um, uh, of some kind of uh, like lawsuit or a legal action. Yeah, it will be a legal action. We can mm -hmm. do it as anonymous, uh, mm -hmm. but there's always a chance that it, it they can be revealed. Okay. All right. Um, and then I don't know if you have anything to wrap up on this. I just want to know what you think is coming over the horizon. Uh, in terms of this story here? Uh, I don't know. I think it's, uh, well, right now, I think we're going to see it expand to other retailers. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to uh, uh, an attorney, and he said if they if they if a company sells a buy-build shoe kit uh, to it, probably they should be expecting a visit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll see what, what happens. No one really just no for sure yeah if you, if you potentially because we know with brownells brownells got visited they said they don't sell any of those particular kits um and then they would never like voluntarily give up any kind of information either right um and in this case they said they didn't and they don't sell those kits um they do sell stuff from polymer 80 um so people out there, these Polymer 80 kits, 80% 80 lowers are legal. People can still buy them from Polymer 80, and they're legal to get from other places, right? Correct. Okay. Um, so the, and the only thing at issue here is these uh, buy, build, shoot kits that were, were out there. And if folks already have those, they don't need to, like, go about destroying them. Or, you know, sometimes we see people, like, walking down to the police department and turning stuff in. Please. Don't do that. No. Yeah. Um, that, you know, you, a lot of times those those police departments, especially when you walk in there, they can entrap you. And the next thing you know, you've put yourself into basically legal quicksand. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I would avoid that. All right, John. So what do you want to what do you want to say here to, to uh, wrap this up? Or what can you uh, tell us about the article that's going to be coming out other than uh, these things? Well, right now, that's what it is, just uh, confirming some information, giving out some of the new information, and then we'll go from there and see what else we can get. We have some other breaking news story that's going to be coming out in the next few days mm -hmm. that you know about and no one else knows about yet. So, mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, so, our 2020 is not going out silently. No, definitely not. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna uh, run us ragged. <laughs> you know, um, I, I'm just like, we're, we're not even there, man. Imagine what's gonna happen in the last days and last hours of this year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's what I'm I'm worried about. All right, John. So for the once again for the folks out there who want to reach out to you, how can they do that? Uh, just go to crumpy.com. That has all my information there. Um, I have a YouTube channel, John Crump too, um, as well. Okay. And read my ammo land. Awesome, awesome. If you guys want to at the Gundies, say that again. Vote for me at the Gundies. <laughs> All right. So please do that. John's uh, John's on a very important mission there. If you want to support us, you can go to HankStrange.com. Lots of different uh, ways and things you guys can do to support us on there. We do have uh, these patches that we're selling on there. If, if you want to support us and get your hands on some merch, um, as well as we have a new patch coming out. And right now we also have a new sticker that is out right there. And if you get any of the patches, you'll get the sticker free or you could buy the sticker from uh from our website if you're interested in that thanks so much to everyone uh for watching this video i hope you guys like share and subscribe to it and please do follow up with my friend here john crump and uh support him i think he's doing a lot of good exhaustive work on this so thanks a lot john all right thank you all right we're out of here peace all right Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.